the endocrine disruptors, the estrogen mimickers, which hyperfeminize women uh, connected to breast cancer and a, a hormonal fluctuation, and uh, feminize men. And then we actually see a lot of males now aren't even at age 12, 13 having their testicles drop. So the girls are going into puberty at five, six years old because of the food and the water. And the boys are becoming feminine because of this and aren't even having their testicles uh, uh, you know, literally uh, like ovaries drop. Uh, this is just incredible. You're saying you've got a report up on prisonplanet.com. I guess you just already did your big report. Obama's ours plan to sterilize population through water supply already happening. My God, this is mega huge, Watson. And, and again, people, we're risking our lives here. That's why I always have such excitement. I know what we're doing. This, we have caught these. Oh, my God. Okay, I, you know what? I'm leaving the room. I'm not going to be able to shut up. I'm, I'm going to leave the room and watch from the control room. Watson, you've got the floor. I, I've got to shut up. Start over. This is huge breaking information. This is huge. Watson, tell them. Yeah, they've been. these anti-androgens have not only been found in the water supply, but according to this study, which is the abstract of which is on encyclopedia.com, and I've linked to it from the article on prisonplanet.com right now, actually a study from October 2001, so this has been known for some time now. And you can, uh, looks like you have to buy the actual full scientific study, but it was in the uh, environmental health perspective from October 1st, 2001. And it says that these same anti-androgens have been found in pesticides, and they test, which are sprayed on our food, and they tested them on rats, and uh, they were, quote, demonstrated to induce demasculinization in rats. So they're having the same effect that they are on the fish uh, in the water, and not only fish. Um, polar bears, bald eagles, otters, and whales have all been similarly affected by these gender-bending chemicals. And uh, it's a problem not only in the UK, but it's global. Now, the... Uh, professor at Exeter University, having established that these chemicals are having gender-bending gender effects on fish and animals, said, quote, there is certainly the potential for it to have an effect in humans and possibly a marked effect. Professor Charles Tyler of Exeter University, who is one of the country's leading authorities on the effects of estrogen. So you tie that with the fact that global sperm count is reducing at an accelerating rate, especially amongst white European males. There's a study that I've linked to from the article which talks about that as well. So these things are going into our water supply at an increasing rate above and beyond the normal pollutants from industry and pharmaceutical products. Now, the uh, ironic thing about all this, as was revealed in a March 2009 BBC Country File documentary program is that the uh, water authorities in England have these large industrial water filters which at the source of the sewage plant can filter out these very chemicals that are causing gender bending effects and have devastated the uh, fish population in the UK. They have the filters which can remove remove them. And during a, one test in uh, Derby, which is not too far away from where I live, they were found to successfully be able to remove these anti-androgens. But that test, although successful, was blocked from being rolled out nationwide and these large filters were prevented from being installed nationwide because of concerns about, quote, their carbon footprint and that they might contribute to global warming, which is obviously the latest veil behind which Holdren and his uh, eugenicist colleagues camouflaged their uh, eugenicist agenda. So now, because of concerns about global warming and carbon footprint, the very filters that would eliminate these gender-bending chemicals, which are a a real environmental threat, not only to the food supply and animals, but also to humans as well, is being blocked because uh, people in control of the uh, fake man-made climate change movement are protesting that they would harm
on the environment because they release some CO2. So the waters, the lakes will continue to be poisoned by this gender-bending chemical. But see, that's a religious statement. Now, the globalists that set this up cold-bloodedly don't believe it. They know carbon dioxide is what plants breathe. But it's like, oh, you can't test the other water supplies that have the drugs in it. That Driving a car to the lake would release carbon. <laughs> you know, see, see, this is their sick joke. They practice mental illness to make everybody else basically feel crazy and confused. This is so sick, Watson. And again, I have that AP article where they found the drugs in our water supply of an even different type and a higher level than was possible from sewage runoff. And they find it in water supplies that aren't connected to a water supply that's downstream or has any runoff. They're finding it in aquifer water that's taken out and then sent to a treatment plant to have fluoride added, they're adding it there. So they're, they're finding it in major city supplies that come from aquifers. They're putting it in the water. They're doing it. And I'm looking at your article here on prisonplanet.com. There are people in there attacking you, saying, how dare us not want to do this, Paul? We've got to get rid of the humans for the earth. <laughs> that's, that's the wider issue, Alex, is the fact that you know, the biggest battle is not convincing people that eugenicists like Holder and in positions of power uh, advocate in these positions, you know, nor even that they actually might be carrying them out, as is documented in this article. The biggest battle is pointing out why mass sterilization of large sections of the population is wrong and, you know, why it would create an oppressive, hyper-fascist, brave new world society. Because as you just mentioned, I would say from my experience that most people agree with the top eugenicists that the useless eaters need to be sterilized without realizing that such programs would target everyone, not just brown people, not just people on welfare. They're well, that's because everyone. in movies and TV, I mean, half the science fiction movies I've seen are more We'll have a scene where, why'd you join up for the military corps? Take Starship Troopers. Oh, you got to be a citizen to have babies, and I want to have babies. Or, I mean, just all, I'm a science fiction fan. When I had time, I'd watch science fiction movies. I'd say more than half has a message of, in the future, you got to have a license to have kids. It's predictive programming. And so people think this is the knowledgeable thing. I mean, I have some family who's dead now. But she would sit around and talk about the white trash and how they, you know, might need to, you know, are breeding too much. And so it was just an accepted knowledge. Listen, 34 states passed laws for forced sterilization by 1931. I mean, Hitler got all his ideas from England and the U.S. So all the big robber barons are into this. So, yeah, no, exactly. Listen, I, I have yuppies emailing me. I see them on the street. I mean, Dr. Pianca gets a standing ovation, so do all these other eugenicists. They are the majority in the power structure. And they, though, go, wait a minute, the elite wants to kill us, and that's a good idea, but I trust it and give it to my kid, but I trust him and drink the water. Because, again, they think they're the elite. Man, they are idiots, my friend. Yeah, it's all very liberal, isn't it? I mean, the liberals also uh, champion somebody like Marie Stopes, who was recently honoured in Britain by getting her own stamp. Um, Marie Stopes advocated the compulsory sterilisation of the diseased drunkards or simply those of bad character. That's a direct Margaret quote. Sanger got a stamp. Same time, same year, if memory serves. Again, it's all unified. We are... I went to a school that was partially black, but I mean, a large portion of it. Uh, when I was in kindergarten, because we lived in White Rock Lake in Dallas, and then we moved out to the uh, you know countryside after that for first grade. But the point is, is that I went to Margaret Sanger Elementary. There was a statue of her, calling blacks subhuman. The blacks are taught though to love her. She's a hero. Oh, you kill me. Oh, I love you. Isn't that loving, Paul? Oh, it's liberal. Uh oh, it's very liberal to uh, champion these people who whose legacy can be traced through and before Hitler. Marie Stopes sent love letters to Hitler. She was fascinated by him because he advocated the same ideas. 
Oh, so, what's are you anti-Semitic? I mean, oh, we get attacked by the ADL. You don't want to kill Hitler's not good. Oh my! Hitler's not liberal now. Now Stokes Stokes attended the Nazi Congress on Population Science in Berlin in 1935. That's where she called for sterilizing people as bad character, and she also concentrated her abortion clinics in poor areas because she wanted to reduce the birth rate. Of the hey, but that's classes. not just them. Ruth Bader Ginsburg gave an AP interview and said, we can't get rid of abortion. We have to get rid of, quote, populations we don't want. Right. I mean, these people are everywhere. You know uh, what? I got an idea, Paul. How about if, if we're over, why don't they just kill themselves? I mean, all these people can just kill themselves. Oh, but see, they can't. Their lives have value and they have to oversee killing us.